SunGrow presents its latest product update on residential energy storage solutions. Get ready for the new three-phase hybrid with more power than ever. Watch this installation video to be best prepared for your next project with SunGrow's hybrid inverter SHT. Please note that the inverter must only be installed by professional technicians. Scan the QR code on the inverter with your phone to get the user manual. Please read the safety instructions in our manual before you start to mount the inverter. You need a suitable place for the inverter. This means it should be a room where no flammable materials or gases are stored. Furthermore, the inverter should not be exposed to direct sunlight, rain or snow. Make sure to maintain the correct distances from the inverter and have sufficient space for the installation. Check the user manual for the right measurements. Use the wall mounting bracket and the bottom mounting bracket to hang the inverter on the wall. All screws and plugs required for the installation are included in the delivery. You only need your own tools. And off you go! Before the inverter can be connected, the AC home circuit breaker must be disconnected. Keep both the AC and DC switches disconnected to avoid live line operation. Set the DC switch on the left side of the inverter from ON to OFF. There are two PE connections, one on the left side and another one on the right side of the inverter. At least one of them must be connected to the general grounding of the house. Crimp the grounding cable, remove the screw on the grounding terminal and fasten the cable with a screwdriver. Let's go on with the AC connector set. Because of our handy plugs, you don't have to open the inverter for installation. When wiring, the five wires, load or grid, should be correctly positioned according to the markings and inserted into the terminal at the same time. The inverter's grid and load terminals are integrated into one port. After finishing wiring, make sure the cold-pressed terminal does not protrude from the outside surface of the AC terminal. Ensure that the wires are securely placed by slightly pulling them. Insert the AC connector into the grid and load terminal on the inverter until you hear a click. Tighten the swivel nut to the housing. Lock the AC connector using a slotted screwdriver. Now let's take a look at the DC connectors. You have to assemble the cable ends with the crimping pliers. One is negative terminal, one is positive terminal. Lead the cable through the cable gland and insert the crimp contact into the insulator until it snaps into place. Gently pull the cable backward to ensure firm connection. Tighten the cable gland and the insulator. Pre-fasten the MC4 terminal by hand. Then fasten the terminal with the MC4 wrench. Check the DC cable connections for polarity correctness. Ensure that the open circuit voltage in any case does not exceed the inverter input limit of 1000 volts. The polarity is marked on the inverter. Check again that the polarity corresponds to the imprint, then plug the connectors into the right terminals. You will hear a click when you connect the plugs to the connections on the inverter. The next step is to install the battery connection. Strip the insulation from each DC cable by 7 to 8 mm. Pay attention to the correct polarity. Assemble the cable ends with the crimping pliers. Lead the cable through cable gland and insert the crimp contact into the insulator until it snaps into place. Gently pull the cable backward to ensure firm connection. Tighten the cable gland with the MC4 wrench. Check again for polarity correctness and plug the connectors into the BAT plus and BAT minus terminals. A clear click can be heard. That's it! The cable connections on the inverter side are done for the battery connection. Check out SunGrow's SBH installation video to continue the installation on the battery side. Now let's continue with the communication terminal named COM2. The COM2 terminal is used for establishing RS-485 communication with devices such as the energy meter, the battery or the heat pump. Unscrew the swivel nut from the connector and take out the terminal block. Remove the seal and lead the cable through the cable gland. For single strand wire, remove approximately 4 to 5 centimeters of the cable sheath of the communication cables. 
Then strip approximately 7 to 10 millimeters of the inner cables. If necessary, you may have to fit the cables with end sleeves before you push them into the plug. For multi-core, multi-strand wires, remove approximately 4 to 5 centimeters of the cable sheath of the communication cables. Then strip approximately 12 to 14 millimeters of the inner cables. The SunGrow battery is connected to the battery terminal BAT on the COM2 terminal when using the RJ45 plug. If you use the pin terminal connection, connect the communication cable to the inverter COM2 ports H and L. To connect the smart energy meter, which is also part of the delivery scope, plug the wires into the A2 port of the COM2 terminal and pin A on the meter and B2 port of the COM2 terminal and pin B on the meter. Check out our energy meter and SunGrow battery installation videos for a detailed step-by-step -step instruction. For the digital output connection, plug the wires into the DO terminals COM1, NO1 and COM2, NO2 terminal of the COM2 terminal. Check the user manual for more detailed information. Now all the preliminary steps are covered. Let's dive into the final stage of the installation process – installing the communication device that you need for commissioning the inverter. For commissioning, you have to connect the new Ynet module. It combines Ethernet and Wi-Fi in one port and is part of the delivery scope. If you want to use Ethernet, simply unscrew the swivel nut from the Ynet S. Take out the inner sealing ring and unscrew the housing from the communication module. Thread the network cable through the swivel nut and gasket. Insert the RJ45 plug into the front plug connector until you hear a click and tighten the housing. Simply connect the module to the inverter and that's it. The installation is done. Now it's time to turn on the power. First, you have to switch on the AC circuit breaker. Next, set the DC switch on the left side of the inverter to the ON position to connect the inverter to the PV generator. Now the LED display will turn on. You can touch the LED indicator to see all information. To receive comprehensive commissioning instructions, check out our commissioning videos.